Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to use two-part resin for pouring molds. Some of you guys may already know that I typically use uh, air drying clay in molds. However, recently, a few months ago, I found that um, it was time for me to also kind of start experimenting with resin because it's stronger, it allows you to get like more intricate molds, and it also allows you to get like really really fine crisp details which wasn't really something that i needed up until very recently because i was doing a lot of like more vintage and shabby chic however as time went on i kind of started experimenting with different things and also um since like my pace of work at the moment is like i you know i'm doing a lot of projects all the time resin makes it a lot easier for me to make molds quickly that are ready and dry and ready for me to paint them and put them on whatever i need them on so when that need appeared i started to kind of look into um resin and how to use it and stuff like that and so today i would like to share kind of a little bit of what i've learned so far now again little disclaimer i'm not a pro i have not been doing this for as long as some people have and there's probably a lot of things that i don't really know however um lately i've been pouring molds quite successfully and i've managed to get you know some pretty decent results so i just want to share the knowledge that i've kind of accumulated so far but yeah so without me rambling on for too much longer let's get into it okay so things that you're going to need before you get started so obviously you need to decide which molds you're going to make ideally you also want to have like a spare mold or something like that to the side with like some smaller elements in it that you can pour in case if you get any resin left over then you don't just waste it you can actually like make some extra molds out of it because um i still haven't mastered the art of mixing just enough resin um you know the, that you're going to need for a specific mold i know that people that have been doing this for a long time years and years can literally you know just eyeball the exact measurements of um how much they're going to need for a mold um i'm not there yet so i like to place a few molds next to me so that then um if i have leftovers then i can just pour something else so you're going to need your mold you're going to need two cups for two part resin so one cup for part a one cup for part b and then depending on what type of resin that you have um you're going to either need cups that have like measuring lines on them if you need to measure by volume or if you need to measure by weight which is what i have you're going to need some scales um so mine is um, needs to be measured one to one by weight so um which is very easy i like that they made it easy for me um you're going to need a stick that you can use to mix things with you're going to need some protective gloves definitely use gloves don't just you know um use it without gloves dangerous and um also i like to keep like a little bamboo stick on hand um and it helps to get like resin into tiny little details in case if it doesn't flow in um because it sets really really quickly so you might need to help it out a little bit so now the resin that i have is um from mb fiberglass here in uk um and it's called polycraft sg 2000 um, so this is the one that I personally use. Um, they also have different kind of models of um, two-part resin. Best thing that I can say is go on their website, MB Fiberglass, and then um, have a read. They um, they talk about you know the differences between them. But this is personally what I ended up going for, and I've now purchased another kit, so I'm almost out of it um they also sell like little tester pots you know with just like a hundred grams i think um so that you know you can just buy a little bit to test it out so you don't have to buy a kilogram straight away um i have a kilogram here so um ideally you also want to be wearing a mask um my mask is in the wash at the moment but yeah if you have a mask wear a mask um extra protection even though this resin doesn't smell um it's all still like not very good for your respiratory system so you know don't um don't mess around with it so first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shake both of these up really really well 
and then you're gonna turn your scale on place your cup zero it and then you're gonna pour whichever part a or b so i'm gonna pour i'm gonna pour quite a lot i'm gonna pour like let's say 34 mil 34 grams rather so i set this to the side and then I place my cup on again. And I don't know why my scale isn't very good, but like it wants zero. Oh, well then, you know, it'll, it'll start showing different ways, but so far it hasn't really affected um, the quality. And then you're gonna pour part B. So equal amount, 35-ish. And at the moment, while they're in separate containers, um, they're not going to go hard. So at the moment, you still have time. You, do, um, you don't have to like worry about them setting or anything. Next, you're going to mix them. When you mix them, from that point onwards, you have about two to three minutes um, until it starts setting completely. So, um, and what I've um, learned and what I was told is that the bigger amount of resin that you mix, the quicker it sets. I don't know why or how that works, but apparently that's the case. So now I'm gonna get ready to mix them together. Also, I forgot to mention, make sure that you do it on like a surface that you don't mind getting it on um, because accidents do happen. Um, that's what happened to me. That's why I had to get a new desk because mine got ruined. <laughs> so then you're gonna pour, I usually pour the more liquidy one inside of the other one and then you're going to stir it together it says to stir it for about 30 seconds but i usually don't do that i stir it for about i don't know 10 or so seconds and then and then you just go like this and pour it and i like to kind of go around the whole perimeter if i can because it can take time for it to flow into all of the little bits. Right, so, um, almost done here. So as you can see, it's not going inside of these little bits here. So I'm just going to help it with my bamboo stick because I know that there's enough resin. It doesn't need more. Otherwise, we're going to over pour it. Right, so I helped it with my bamboo stick. Now I'm going to pour the next mold. I'm trying to do it slowly and then I'm straight away going to pour the B and you will be able to feel it warming up as it starts to set I can feel it already and then so as you can see the B was a little bit on over pour And then I'll pour this mold. It's good to have a few big molds, so in case if you over pour too much resin, then you can pour them quite quickly. So it's good to have molds that have a lot for you to, a lot of elements for you to pour. And then we'll use up the leftovers on these like and as soon as it when it starts setting it's going to become harder for you to get it into the intricate details so i'm going to stop here so use your bamboo stick also you can do this to kind of scoop, scoot off the excess a little bit before it's set. Now you'll be able to clean it all off. Um, like all of this, you'll be able to clean it off. Now, as you can see, this part has already set. I definitely mixed too much resin for, you know, the few molds that I planned to pour. So it went a little bit sideways, but it's okay. But again, you get to learn from my mistakes here. Don't pour too much. It's better to, you know, do it in like two or three goes. But again, like if you over pour too much, just like have a scoop or something, and then you can scoop up some off before it starts setting. And then 
these bits you'll be able to clean them off with like a little bit of sandpaper and stuff and yeah so now we just wait for it to set Okay, so our molds are ready to be taken out. Some of them are still a little bit warm, which means that they might be a little bit soft, which is a good time to take them out if you want your mold to, um, to bend a little bit. Like for example, if you want to take your mold and you want to wrap it around something, so then you carefully take it out. As you can see, it's still a little bit pliable then what you would do if you want to um, wrap your plastic mold around something is when it's like this see it's it it molds like this you take it out when it's at this stage so it's all completely white but it's um like you know it's still a little bit warm and then you can wrap it around something um, if you wanted to now so i want to keep it straight for the time being and um you know look at the beautiful beautiful gorgeous uh mold that you get out of you know just like pouring it with resin so you won't get this kind of detail with clay well not very easily anyways and so you know in terms of taking them out it's very very easy oh this is a gorgeous little frame i haven't used it yet and then all of these as well. You just kind of pop them out. They pop out really easily. If you've over poured your mold a little bit like this, like I have here. So as you can see, it's bowed. The a struggle that you might have when you go to like glue it down is obviously that when it's a little bit bowed, um, it might not sit down properly as you want it to, like it won't sit flush. Um, what you can do is once it's completely cured, just get, um, uh, if you have a sanding machine, that's like ideal. If not some sandpaper and you can just sand it down a little bit, you can sand it back. Um, and then let's take this one out. So this is the one that I had to scrape off. So it's a little bit messy, but again, like this, all of this, um, thin stuff that we scraped off it can be kind of you can break it off and then any um, rough edges you can just clean them up with a little bit of sandpaper I even have some sandpaper here so I can show you so you know you just take a bit of sandpaper go over like this and it's nice and clean so obviously with a slightly um, more intricate mold, it's gonna be a little bit harder to go around all of the edges, but at least this gives you an idea. So with this, it's a little bit still soft, so I'm not gonna um, sand these yet because <laughs> I don't wanna lose these very delicate legs because even though they are made out of plastic, they are still very, very delicate. So you just either cut with an X-Acto knife um, around the edges, which, in fact, I may be able to tell, um, show you right now. So you can just cut around this like that and then you get nice clean edges. Or you can sand the edges off, whichever fits you better. But yeah, this is the kind of the general idea of this whole thing. So you take your molds out when they are ready and then you can see this one is now already quite hard. You can still like bend it a little bit, but it's quite hard. Um, some of these, you can heat them up with a heat gun and then they become pliable again. I haven't tried that yet, but um, I know that a lot of people do that where they heat it up and then um, it becomes soft and pliable again and then you can wrap it around. But that kind of comes down to, you know, the different um, types of resin that are out there and stuff. Um, and yeah, so this is the general idea and then all of these things are very, very easy to clean off. And the beautiful thing about this is that your molds stay quite clean after <laughs> after all of this. You just need to take out any of the like overspilled bits and that's it. Well, there you guys go. So I hope that you found this helpful um, or interesting, or maybe this answered some questions that you may have had about 
um, resin or how to pour like these kind of plastic molds because I know that when I started um, looking for resin, I was at a loss. I didn't know where to start and what to look at. And um, yeah, so, and then you get like really, really cool, um, you know, things out of your molds that are very strong and stuff. But as you guys know, I still love my clay and I still like to use it um, on a lot of things um, when I don't need a mold to be like very intricate, where it's a more vintagey project or if um, I can wait for it to dry and stuff. It's just a good alternative to have. I like to kind of mix and match and use the medium that is the most kind of suitable for whatever I'm making. Um, that day. Yeah, there you guys go. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!